What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over 12 tips or tricks that can help you get that perfect print. So aside from settings, a lot of people ask me how I go about getting uh, my prints to look so good. But today I'm going to go over some of those tips with you to help you along the way. Now if you're satisfied with the results that you're getting right now, by all means, list them in the comments section below. Share with the rest of us, especially if it's something I didn't go over today. Let's start with number 12, and that is always read the manufacturer's specifications. Manufacturers usually have the specifications on the bottle or the box of the resin that you're getting, and a lot of that has to do with the strength of the UV light that's in your printer as well. So take that into consideration. Of course, these are general specifications. You can always tweak with them to get what your desired results. At least it gives you a starting point, especially if you're new to 3D resin printing. Number 11, don't sacrifice quality for speed. So of course we want it to print as fast as possible in order to get that model together and paint it and, and everything like that. But don't sacrifice quality for speed. So if you're working with settings that give you the best possible print and it's slow, then guess what? Let it be slow. Let it take the time to properly print, get all that detail in there and make sure that everything turns out the way you want. That's one thing that I can tell you that I do not worry about. I do not worry about speed. I don't worry about how fast the print gets done because I want to make sure that everything turns out the way I want it to. I want to capture all that detail that's in the print. That way, whenever I paint it, it I get the best possible result. Number 10, and a lot of people don't talk about this, and that's lubrication. A lot of people don't realize that these Z-axis going up and down on these printers kind of wear and tears a little bit and it's always good to have some grease to, for that to make sure that it's going up and down the way it should and also to have some lube for your linear rails that way to make sure that they're going up and down as smooth as possible too. If you start hearing a lot of grinding noise whenever you're printing chances are you need to lubricate your linear rails or your z-axis. <laughs> One thing I generally do every time I get a new printer, that's one of the first things I go and do right off the bat. And a lot of times they don't put enough grease or lubrication on there to begin with. Again, it's just making sure that you're getting the best possible print by no knotting or skipping or line shifting. Number nine, print conjoining pieces flat side up. What I mean by that is if you have two pieces that are joining together to make one bigger piece and they connect by a flat surface, make sure you're printing that side up and not using any supports on it. When the piece pulls away from the FEP, you tend to get divots and a little bit of rise on those pieces and you have to sand the mess out of them in order to get them flat. I'm trying to save you a little bit of time by printing them flat side up. That way they join together with minimal seam and gap. I did a video on this earlier. You can also check that out in my series of videos. Number eight, Check your FEP from time to time, especially if you're using the whole entire build plate a lot, or if you're using your printer a lot. The FEP can get scratched, have a lot of divots and holes in it, that way the UV light doesn't get through it, and you'll have failed prints every single time. Not to mention you want to make sure that your FEP doesn't get a pinhole or anything like that in it, and it doesn't leak resin on top of your screen. Then you're going to be in a whole world of hurt. It's just a good practice just to look at it every so often to make sure that everything is perfectly fine. Number seven, room temperature. Making sure that your printer is room temperature. Again, it's also on the specifications. And you wanna make sure that your printer's not near any vents or anything like that, or the temperature just doesn't fluctuate up and down a lot. Could have a huge effect on your print quality. Number six, build plate orientation. This is extremely important that you're giving the right support to your pieces and making sure that they're on the build plate the way they need to be. Now this is something that you'll have to toy around with in order to get to that comfort zone that's good for you. Me, myself, if I usually have any flat pieces, say such as a sword or something of like that, I usually stand it straight up and print that way. That way I don't have any unlevel warping or anything like that. Or I print things at an angle usually never print any flat surfaces flat on the build plate. I always do it with an angle of some sort. 
Number five, and this is another one that a lot of people don't realize, but agitate your print while it's in the alcohol. So whether you use a cleaning solution station or use just one of those pickle jars, it's always good to have an old toothbrush on hand to scrub some of that old resin off. There's usually always a layer of resin that still sits on that after it comes out, and even if you put it in the alcohol. Don't believe me, go and rub your fingers across a flat surface and see if you'll get some stuff that comes off. Number four, don't let the resin set too long in the vat. So if you're not printing for a while and you know you're not gonna be printing for a while, always take that resin and put it back in your bottle. Don't let it sit in the vat for too long. It tends to build up residue. It doesn't solidify necessarily, but all the compounds go to the bottom. You'll have to go back and stir it up in the vat anyway. So it's always a good practice to take it out of the vat whenever you're not using it. Number three, make sure you have enough resin in your vat. There's nothing more frustrating than going through a print and realizing you didn't put enough resin in and it's not gonna complete itself. So I'm not sure about other slicers because I use Chitu Box, but I do know that Chitu Box does give you type of specifications in the upper right hand corner. It kind of lets you know how much resin in order to put in for that print. I usually don't add resin mid print or towards the end of a print simply because the temperature shift and everything will just surely almost cause you to have a bad print. Number two, keep your printer clean. You would think that that would be common sense, but when I say clean, making sure that resin doesn't drip on the side, making sure resin doesn't get under your vat onto your screen. It's always a good idea to have like some alcohol pads or something like that to clean off any residue or anything like that once you get done printing. The longer, the more you take care of your machine, the longer you're gonna get use out of it and the better quality prints that's gonna do for you. And number one, add enough drain holes. So I always add more than one drain hole into a part. I added several that way helps down, keep down, it helps keep down on suction and not to mention, you don't have any problems with trapped resin in that part. So this is also something to pay attention to when you use pre-supported files because I have seen some people to use those and not have any drain holes in there. Always make sure that you have that. Of course, unless you're printing solid. So again, it all depends on your settings and what you're used to. I usually print my pieces at either 1.2 millimeter or 1.5 millimeter hollowed out with about four to 5% infill, uh, the grid infill. And I always put drain holes in conjoining places. That way they're not gonna show up on the print anyway. We also have a bonus tip, and that is to use hot water on your supports. What that means is after you've cleaned your print and alcohol, take a bucket or a pail or something of some hot water, set your print in there and take your supports off. You'll find that they come off a lot easier and it's gonna be a lot less stress on your print. Now one thing that I like to do is I do like to take my supports off before I clean my print simply because my alcohol does not get as dirty as quick and it lasts me a little bit longer. But again, that's your preference. All right, everybody, I hope that helps you. I hope you get the best possible print. If you got something that I didn't cover, by all means, again, put it into the comments section below. If you like this video, make sure to give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then make sure you do that as well. You can also get in on my Patreon. That link is also below in the description. And as we build our Patreon, you can also discuss things amongst one another, as well as myself through our Discord. And make sure you hit that notification bell, that way you don't miss out on any future videos. So until the next video, everyone, stay safe out there. So until the next video, everybody, stay safe out there, and we'll see you.